anybody. They are removing the facts of ancient history from us completely. They're taking them out of our textbooks, especially in North America, that the globalists call the real threat to globalism. Apparently, those of us in the United States and Canada who are Bible believers and especially pro-Israel are their new target. We're the problem. And they need to get rid of us somehow. Everybody okay? I don't know if you wanted to come or not. Some of you probably wishing you hadn't now. But I don't believe in messing around with people. Let's keep on our little journey. The punishment that's coming. Turn to Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13. According to the Bible, Babylon is going down. But Babylon never has gone down. In fact, Saddam Hussein in 1988 invited many of us around the world who were speakers and teachers and so forth to come and visit his beautiful reconstruction of Babylon. That was 1988. Babylon's still there. In fact, a lot of the Shiite insurgents have been hiding in Babylon and using it as a defense, thinking that America will not bomb Babylon, that it's a treasure. Well, that's an interesting story, too, because America has just built the largest U.S. embassy in the history of embassies. They have already employed 5,000 people, and it sits on the Euphrates River. Now, I'd like to know, how come we have spent billions of dollars to build the largest embassy in the world in a country that supposedly we're going to get out of? Does the Bible indicate that Babylon is somewhere in the Middle East around the Euphrates River and the Persian Gulf and the shipping trade Of that area? The answer is absolutely it does. Now we have another interesting thing to deal with, don't we? Did you know there's more shipping and goods passing by shipping in that area of the world than there is even in New York or in London or in Los Angeles, the major ports of the world? There are more going on there than anywhere in the world. Most of us don't know about what's happening in the Gulf, the Persian Gulf. The United Arab Emirates are growing. They are wealthy because of oil. Dubai is the new resort of the world. How many of you know what I'm talking about? If you go to Harrods, the big department store in London, they have a huge section of it selling real estate in Dubai. Here's the good news. You can buy an apartment in a multi-story building for only two and a half million dollars. Good grief. Isaiah 13, look at the verse number 1. The burden of what? What does it say? Babylon. Look down at verse 6. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The day of the Lord, used 25 times, refers to the tribulation period. Verse 9. The day of the Lord comes, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. This is the message to Babylon. He'll destroy the sinners out of it. The stars of heaven, the constellations thereof, shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in its going forth. The moon shall not cause their light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity and cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. Verse 13, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and the day of his fierce anger. This is incredible. Let me quickly give you a few things. One, the reason for the past judgment of Babylon. Jeremiah tells us several times, because of their sins and rebellion against God. Number two, the result of the past judgment upon Babylon is that no one will live there. As you know, no one has. But everything that's being done there is close by. Number three, we, we know that God says he's going to bring his revenge upon Babylon. He also says, according to Jeremiah, he's going to do it through a great 
nation from afar. Number four. Here is the problem, folks. Most of us jump into this without the background we have just gave you. According to the Bible, we are not just talking about the ancient Babylon because it fell in 539 B.C. in one night, Belshazzar's feast. Well, when is this going to happen? Answer, in the day of the Lord. There is a future Babylon. And the book of Revelation quotes voluminously, especially from Jeremiah's unbelievable descriptions of Babylon. It quotes them and puts them in chapter 17 and 18, as well as chapter 14 of Revelation. Well, now we got something really interesting. Are you with me? Because we're going to wrap this up quick. It's going to move fast now. Number one, the Bible says it's a woman sitting on a beast with seven heads, with ten horns on the seventh head. This woman is decked out with precious clothes and jewels. And the Bible calls it a mystery because it's like crime, you know, a mystery crime, figuring out who did it. No. The Greek word musterion was never translated. It was said into English. Musterion, mystery. What is a musterion? It is something in the past that was not known, but is going to be known in the future. This woman that sits on this beast with seven heads is called Mystery Babylon the Great. Everybody with me now? How many of you know about that in Revelation 17? Amen? Look at you, almost all of you. Okay? That's the first clue. Something in the past, but all the particulars of it were not known, but will be in the future. She's sitting on a seven-headed beast. What does that represent? Revelation 17 says it represents kings or kingdoms. Actually, empires. Because it says five of them had fallen in John's day. One was existing in John's day. And number seven has ten horns on the head. Because the seventh and final world empire will cover the entire world with a tenfold division of the world. Is everybody listening? What are the five empires that fell? Babylon, Assyria, Persia, Greece. Oh no, there's one before that. Egypt. Five of them had already fallen. One is. What's that empire? Anyone? Rome. But it's going to receive a fatal wound. The sixth head receives a fatal wound. And a lot of people think that's a person. No, it's an empire. Read your Bible carefully. It's one of the heads. It receives a fatal wound. It dies but it comes back to the life as a world empire of the end time with a tenfold division covering all nations of the world. That's why I do not agree with many of my prophecy fellows who constantly say it's a revived Roman Empire as the European Union. I don't think so. It is a division that's going to be of the entire world. By the way, division number one in the federal constitution of the Club of Rome, the Council of Foreign Relations, and also the Socialist International of Europe, have all divided the world already into ten divisions. And number one is Canada, the U.S., and Mexico. And NAFTA was an economic experiment to see if it would work, and it didn't go real well. And now the next step is what? It's the North American Union, which will be presented to the U.S. Congress this month at the end of this month. It will have a new currency called the Amero to compete with the Euro. Wow. This is dangerous. 